And yet, I'm making another jig. Seems like that's all I'm doing these days. When am I going to actually make a project? I'm making all these jigs for projects, but I haven't made the projects that use the jig. So, I've decided to go with the uh, Ed Styles box joint jig design. And make sure you check out his video. He has, goes into great detail how he came up with the design based on all of the commercially and custom made versions available. Uh, and he also has some plans which are a little tricky to find, but I have a link to them in my description below. Uh, I've taken his drawing plans and put them in a SketchUp. I'm a very visual person. I got to see things in 3D, get a better understanding on what I'm dealing with. So I've done that and which is good because I did find some discrepancies in his plans, some measurements that weren't adding up. So I've also put a cut list in there and put make a PDF of it as well since many people actually don't use SketchUp. So it'll be accessible to all, free of charge. There should be links in the description below and I will also probably have them posted on my website. Okay, so this jig is going to utilize one of these hobby boards as they call it at Home Depot. It's a two foot by four foot sheet of plywood. Um, this particular one is a uh, cabinet gray plywood. They do have a hardwood version for a little bit more money. This one you can usually tell because on the side of the barcode it says the word sandy. And basically what it is is one side is, I guess you could say perfect, and sanded nice and smooth. The other side is just a little bit rougher. And oftentimes you'll see little patches that were filled on the other side. So one is meant to be the front, one's meant to be the back. And so I've created some plans that will fully utilize this entire sheet. The only thing I did not make a provision for on the plans is the uh, rails for the miter slot. Now, um, in my case, I keep lots of scraps around, around the size um, that you would use for miter slots. So, I didn't figure that into it. However, if you want to completely utilize this and also get rails out of it, once we've got the pieces broken down, you could cut, say, three quarter inches off of the bottom of what would be the base and then split that down the middle and that should be the perfect thickness. You'll get two of them around 15 inches long, um, which happens to be the exact width at that point that or depth that the uh, base will be. So, let's go ahead and get this broken down.
Okay, so we got out bulk of our pieces cut, and I like to do what I call like a little assessment. So I did a quick mock-up, and this gives you the opportunity to make sure things are fitting correctly, and gives you the opportunity to see any potential problems or mistakes before you go too much further. And uh, so I figured I'd go over a little bit of what we've got so far. So here's the mock-up of the general layout of the sled. And here you go, you can see how nice together this is your sliding portion, so that's all good. And over here is what we have left in scrap. Um, I went ahead and mocked up the handle. Um, as you can see now, um, this scrap right here will also be utilized. We're going to make the little, I call it a position stop, the part that rotates and has the flat edge. That's why I drew this line. Since it's not a full two inches, I'm making it one and three quarters over out of a two inch circle and that quarter inch flat should be enough. Um, so we got that. The other piece that gets comes off of there will just be scrap. It could be utilized for other things. Um, one of the things I was going to make out of the scrap were some knobs. Now I've already made these in, in the past as an experiment. I, I think I'm just gonna utilize these. I may make a video later on on how I made these. It's nothing really fancy. You just These actually are a little bit larger. They're two and a half inch diameter. And all I do is just you make a circle on the piece of wood you're gonna cut and then just lay it out, you know, doing your lines and then you just cut your circles first is how I like to do it. There's two ways you can do it. I found the easiest way is make a circle on a piece of wood that's obviously larger than you need to be and then cut the smaller holes first then cut the whole circle out at the end and uh, what I find why I think that this route is better than buying a um, off-the-shelf knob is for one you've got this huge flat surface so it acts as like a giant washer you can get much better and a wider dispersion of clamping power than you will most knobs are like a little post they're just barely larger than the net itself so all of your clamping is focused on that little point versus here we have got this huge flat light acts like a giant washer. So we've got that. And as I said, here's our scrap. Now all of it's gonna be utilized. This piece right here will end up being our clacker. I need to shorten it a little bit, which will go here. And then this is another scrap. And what I'm gonna utilize this for is making two one inch diameter knobs, or not knobs, but discs that I will glue together. And that will become the little crank handle. And then I kind of cheated a little bit. I was going to cut out the piece that makes the handle, the rotating portion. And I happen to have a piece over there from previous build that was the exact size I needed to cut out. So um, I won't need to cut this out of the remaining scrap. And I'll make that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my final shapes cut that we're going to need. And then we'll get on to finally drilling the holes and then the assembly.
so we need to be a little strategic when we begin drilling holes. So three of these pieces have three holes in the same spot. So what that will allow us to do is stack them. Now these two are the same length, so we just have to position this centered on here. And then we can drill our three holes and they will all be in the same alignment.